You know that um, we made a big stink out of uh, uh, <laughs> Ocasio Cortez proclaim. Well, she actually didn't proclaim that she voted no. She said she would have, and then people reported it as she voted no. She didn't vote no on the stimulus that screws us for a generation. So, uh, and and um, I was pretty much the only one out there. The Intercept did an article saying she voted no, even though she didn't vote no, and she didn't say she voted no. She said she would have voted no. And now it's it, people are slowly people are starting to realize that you just gave four trillion dollars away and you didn't get any health care for anybody. Wow. And you didn't get a UBI, any payments. And other countries are doing all the, about. First of all, other countries already have health care and they're doing UBIs because they know they have to. And you guys all voted for this thing. Your leadership put together a bill like this. And then you guys left town till May. And so now people are starting. So now she's doing this. So now it's starting. She's trying to get out in front of it. The next stimulus bill where they're going to screw us. Where again. We're not going to get anything. Or we're not going to get anything because they already gave away the store. They have no leverage now because the people who they w- need to get stuff from already got their part. They already got their $4.2 trillion. So now she's going to try and get it. So now let's see what happens. Let's see how this goes. Here we go. Ready? As, as many people may know, and as some may know, I represent um, by many metrics, the most heavily impacted congressional district in America by uh, COVID-19. And I just want to reiterate how important it is that we get health coverage, that we get recurring larger oh payments, $2,000 per family plus 1000 per child. I agree with you. Those two things are super important and we must have them. Healthcare and a $2,000 payment to each person during this crisis. I get it. Why did why didn't you make sure that happened already? We're going on to the fourth stimulus bill. Why why didn't you make sure that your leadership got that in the first bill, where you still had leverage? Why no one's first of all no one's asking these questions. No one will ask her a question. She won't take my questions. She won't return my email. She won't. I, so if you have access to her, and I know some people who watch the show do, would you ask her that? Why didn't you get this in the first bill? And why didn't you demand your leadership put it in the, the in that the third one? The CARES Act? Why didn't you have them do that? That would be my question. And what if they don't what if your leadership doesn't put it in the bill this time? What are you gonna ever call them out for it? And are you gonna try to make sure there's a recorded vote this time? Those would be the that those are, and why didn't you last time? Why didn't you make sure there was a, why didn't you join Thomas Massey? So those would be the questions. No one's asking her those questions. And so now she gets to say this, that we are the next bill where we have zero leverage has to have health care. So now we're going to take care in the middle of a pandemic. Your leadership didn't make sure health care was the first thing they took care of. And by the way, you know how your leadership's going to take care of it, Ocasio-Cortez? How your leadership, how Nancy Pelosi is going to take care of health care is she's going to make payments to insurance companies, not to people. She's not going to give people health care. She's going to give money to insurance companies. She's going to pay people's COBRA when they lose their job during this pandemic. That's their solution, to make sure you have uh, profit baked in just ridiculous. You just expand Medicare payments to everybody's health care. That's it. Just like Trump is doing for coronavirus. Anyway, and you're not and and I guarantee you she's not going to call out Nancy Pelosi for doing that. She's not going to call out Nancy Pelosi for instead of expanding Medicaid or Medicare to cover people when they're losing their jobs. Half of L.A. County doesn't have her job right now. Did you know that half of the people in L.A. County don't have a job right now? So instead of decoupling finally your health care from your job, which is ridiculous, now we all see why how, how ridiculous. Instead of doing that, the Democrats are cementing that we can't. No, we're keeping that. We're going to pay your COBRA. What? No one wants that. And she's not going to call her out. I hope I'm wrong. So I'm going to pressure her to call out Nancy Pelosi. And I urge everyone else who has a platform to 
to pressure her to call out her leadership because the problem is Nancy Pelosi. The Republicans are ready to make direct cash payments to you guys, and Nancy Pelosi stopped it. They're ready to give health care to you. It's Nancy Pelosi who is stopping it. And so I urge you to pressure AOC. I don't have any pressure on her. She says, listen to me. Although I think this is probably a response to all the badgering I've been doing the last couple of weeks on her bullshit. Uh, cause I'm the only one do I'm the only one doing it. So hopefully, hopefully it's having an effect. We'll see. But let's get back to this video. Every month recurring. Uh, for these families and to also make sure that we are including immigrants and our immigrant uh, brothers and sisters and neighbors in these bills. You know, the most heavily impacted district. Yeah, you didn't even include anybody except the rich people in that first bill, just so you know, FYI. And, and the most heavily impacted zip code in the country is also in my district. And it's heavily immigrant overwhelmingly people which honest to god i i'm having a hard time listening to this even though i already heard it twice i'm having a hard time listening to it uh hearing her say these things but how about how her she her district is the biggest victim of the coronavirus which i i don't challenge that which makes it actually extra horrible that you let that bill pass without getting them anything that without calling out your leadership or anything except pretending it was the Republicans fault. Can I ask something, Jimmy? Do you think on this next one they're going to do a, vo a voice vote? Do you think they're going to allow that? We'll see. Because I bet, I, I'd I like bet to they hear, will. I'd like to hear her voice demanding. Yeah, she's not going to do that. She's not ever going to cross Nancy Pelosi. She's not Pelosi. crossing Nancy Pelosi. This they already did the cover talk. Rolling Stones together. This is all talk. This is all talk. Love color. Because she has no leverage now to get this done. There's no leverage. So if this gets done, it's because the Republicans decided to do it. Or it's because Nancy Pelosi... I don't... You, you see how Nancy Pelosi is going to take care of the health care problem. That's not taking care of it. Here we go. And as we've long been saying that these inequities are a pre-existing condition. Not having access to health care is why people are dying. Not not making, uh, you know, having pre-existing conditions because they have confronted the asthma and the elevated lead levels that come from environmental racism and, and concentrated pollution in communities of color and working class communities is why people are dying. It is the compounding effects and the comorbidities that are leading to the to the surge of deaths in our communities by COVID-19. But that being said, when we talk about the solutions that Congress needs to have moving forward, I just think it's important for us to say that incrementalism is not helpful in this moment. Really? It's not helpful oh. for people to say, oh, well, we got something, oh. so we might as well support it. You know, we got a nickel, we got a dime in a trillion dollar bill, so a nickel is more than nothing, so we should support it, is unacceptable. Who voted for not it? In my so why don't you call out anybody for that? Why don't you call out your leadership for negotiating that bill? I've been saying the same thing. Everyone's been giving me a hard time saying they, oh, Ocasio had to vote for it because we need to get those crumbs. She's still kind of operating like she voted against it. Do you notice? Yes. Yes. It's kind of funny because we know she did. Community. A nickel doesn't help. It's like putting a Band-Aid on, on an enormous wound. It's not going it's to help body. us. And the thing is, no. is that I would be amenable to accepting this kind of logic if Congress actually was in session and convening. But if you're going to... Why isn't Congress in session? Who did you vote for for a leader? Who's the Speaker of the House? say and if we're going to say that this new bill is going to give us five dollars and then congress is going to peace out for another month-long recess i'm here to say that that's not going to help our communities 
And we have to make sure that we demand meaningful change and meaningful assistance for working families. From who? Who are you demanding it from? When you say we demand, who are you demanding it from? Who are you negotiating with? Is it the Republicans? Because the Republicans don't control the House. Is it other Democrats? Is this who you have to ask for to take care of workers, other Democrats, and your leadership, Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer? She'll never say it. Which means Nancy Pelosi is going to continue to do it. And you're going to continue to get screwed. And she's going to continue to give speeches like this, calling out a they we to demand from who? I don't know. That means 2000 a month plus 1000 for your kids and, recurring. And that- how are you going to get that? What is your leverage now to get that? No leverage. That means everyone who needs to go to a hospital can go to a hospital without their last words being before being intubated, right. being how much right. is this going to cost me, which is what is happening in our district. Their last words about being being words being uttered about people being worried about the financial position that they're putting their family in because they contracted a virus that they have no control over contracting. And then lastly, we have to make sure that all people in this country are successfully being covered so that that can enable the public health provisions. Why did she say Medicare for all? She just said it. She just said it. We have to make sure that everybody is covered. Covered? You mean covered by Medicare? That's not how you cover. Mm-hmm. She means cover, covered. She means has insurance. <laughs> Come on, you got to laugh a little. I know it's painful. You know, are necessary because this isn't about who's an immigrant and who's a citizen and who's a legal resident. Coronavirus doesn't care about your status. Coronavirus doesn't ask you for your papers. And if we need to keep people inside to keep them alive, then we need to give people the economic ability to do so. And we need to be laser focused about that. We cannot roll over to this administration for that. And No, no, you rolled over to Nancy Pelosi. So do you see the little gaslight there? Oh, it's Trump? No, no. It was Nancy Pelosi. You cannot bow to the logic that a dime and that a crumb is better than nothing. We need to be able to play hardball so that working families can get meaningful support that they need. She's not even willing to call out. Again, I know I'm a broken record, but... We need to play hardball. You're not even willing to call out other Democrats who voted for this. You said, I'm not going to slight anybody who voted for this. You Why? Why wouldn't you? And then why wouldn't you call out your leadership for negotiating this bill and then having a vote where no one's held accountable? You won't. So when she says we have to play hardball, you're she's lying that she's going to do that because to play hardball, you have to play hardball with your own leadership. That's hardball. Softball is saying they're, they're the blame. They're to blame. That's softball. Hardball is actually confronting the person who's in the way, and it's Nancy Pelosi. I'll text of this bill, but what I... You know, why aren't they in session right now? Is that Nancy Pelosi's fault? Is that Donald Trump's fault? And say is that if it matches up with what has been reported, I will not support this bill, personally. I'm not speaking for a caucus... So does that mean when you say you not support it, you mean you're still going to vote for it if Nancy Pelosi tells you to, but you won't support it two weeks later in an article? Is that what you mean? You you notice she's not saying I'm going to vote no. She's never said that yet. Here we go. Let's see. Maybe she'll say it. Not speaking for a delegation, not speaking for anybody, but as the person who's representing the most impacted district in the country, my constituents are upset. My constituents were upset about the first package um, because it it is insulting to think that we can pass such a small amount of money in the context of not knowing when Congress is even going to reconvene. 
and pass such a small amount of money, pat ourselves on the back and then leave town again. Yeah, I'm what... not here to support that. You did that. Um, I understand that we keep being told this is going to be happening in the House bill when the Democrat led bill is going to be bigger in my district and in my, and in New York City and in our community. We have had more deaths than 9-11. Multiple times of 9-11 have happened in the time since Congress has recessed. So I'm not here with the luxury of time. I need legislation that is going to save people's lives. And the fact that Republicans do not want to have recurring payments, the fact that Republicans don't want to fund states and cities, the fact that Republicans don't want to guarantee people's health care is unacceptable to me. I know it's I know that is unacceptable to all of us. And, you know, how we come on this bill, every bill, every vote is extraordinarily personal. But as someone that has to make calls every single day to sons and daughters and widows and parishioners and church leaders and community boards, giving them my condolences every single day about people in our community who are dying. I am not here for a $5 bill. I'm not. And I will not insult my community with one. And that's all I got. I think it's important for us to understand the process um, because there was a related question about UC and voice votes earlier. Um, so there, in turn, I think it's very important that we all understand the process behind this, and I'm sorry to get into the weeds, but procedurally, we need, we need to know the context. So first, you have unanimous consent, which would be passing the bill, um, assuming that there is complete unanimous consent in the House. That basically is saying, presuming every member supports and every member does not support. Now, uh, there was a statement earlier saying that the last bill was passed by unanimous consent. It actually was not. It was passed yeah. by a voice vote. So what happens is that you have unanimous consent, then you have one member, uh, or rather, uh, they did not try to pass by unanimous consent on the first time uh, because they, they knew there was just a growing opposition around it. So it passed by a voice vote, by, by people kind of hollering out the, the yays and nays. Um, now, in order for their... Oh, people kind of hollering out their yays and nays. Oh, it sounds, it sounds hard to discern. They didn't have, uh, so what happened was Thomas Massey, the Republican, demanded, called for a recorded vote. I think that's why they didn't get unanimous consent. And uh, you notice she didn't say, you know, we had to, because I demanded <laughs> a recorded vote. We just, we didn't get that because I demanded. No, it's because someone demanded. That's interesting. Interesting. To be a recorded vote. If one person stands up and asks for a recorded vote, that is not sufficient to actually get that recorded vote. It's sufficient to block the unanimous consent and move it from a unanimous consent to a voice vote, but one person standing up is not sufficient to move from a voice vote to recording a recorded vote. So the person who did that, the person, because it was going to just pass on unanimous consent until Thomas Massey said no, Let's have a let's have a recorded vote, and so now they got to do a voice vote. And he said there, he he called for he said there, well, I don't think there's a quorum. I let's call, challenge that anyway. She's leaving out the part where it was Thomas Massey, not me. I was letting I was going I was willing to allow it pass with the unanimous consent. It was Thomas Massey, not me. This thing that I'm railing about and that people are angry about in my community, I didn't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> except I voted for it and I didn't do anything to stop it except give a bullshit speech where I made pretend it was the Republicans fault. You actually need one, according to house rules, you need one fifth of the quorum. So about 44 members to stand up in order to achieve a recorded vote. So the real question is not, is there one person to stand up to get a recorded vote, but are there 44 members willing to stand up and get that recorded vote. And was and I so, one of the members uh, that stood up to request to get a recorded vote? Is there anything on record that shows that I was saying it's a shame, a shame we don't have a recorded vote? I didn't, I don't know. Maybe she tweeted about it. She tweets about everything. Maybe she tweeted about that. Probably not. Anyway, here we go.
it comes to that calculation, you know, for us, and Listen I know, this. I believe Justin and Mosh and I um, came to a similar conclusion on the first one, which is that, you know, to stand up and ask for a recorded vote when there are not 44 members, um, it would be essentially to needlessly endanger folks. So I think we need I did. I don't know. Did you hear what she just said, Steph? She just said, I'm going to play it back. She said, so for me to stand up and ask for a recorded vote when I know there isn't enough people or there aren't 40 people going along with it. First of all, I don't know if that's a I'll go challenge the veracity of that number, because anyway, there's a certain quorum that they're right. supposed to get. Right. Forty four members. Um, it would be essentially to needlessly endanger folks. So I think we need to. So if she stands up and requests a recorded vote when they know they don't have the 44 members available to go along with her, that would endanger other vote? I don't understand what she's saying. I'm going to back it up again. You mean out of 435 members of House of Representatives, they couldn't get over 40? They couldn't get 40 people to agree and, and to I don't a recorded understand. vote? So they all weren't present? Here's why she didn't. This is her explaining why she didn't call for a recorded vote. Is that three weeks later? This is three weeks later. This is why she didn't call for a recorded vote. Ready? Stand up and ask for a recorded vote when there are not 44 members. Um, it would be essentially to needlessly endanger folks. It would be essentially needlessly endanger folks. I don't know what that, what does that mean, Steph? Literally, it I don't know what that the, means. Um, uh, they're worried about every, Nancy Pelosi and anybody over 65 in the House of Representatives. So I don't, still, I don't, she's, t why would. She's more worried about elected officials, safety and health. What, to I don't be in that room, I guess, in close proximity to each but, other. But she knows it wouldn't pass anyway. She's like, well, if we don't have 44 members to demand a recorded vote, If we don't have 44 members to demand a recorded vote, it won't pass and you won't get a recorded vote. So why wouldn't you want to be on record as having requested it? How does requesting something that's not going to happen, a recorded vote, how does that needlessly endanger people? Do you understand? Do you see the logic flaw yes. there? Right. Do you see the logic flaw there? So that doesn't make sense. I hope you I hope I explained it. So she's saying the reason why I didn't also request a recorded vote was is because uh, it wasn't going to pass anyway. And and so me doing that would have just needlessly endangered other folks. She said folks, not yeah, she did. She wasn't specific. She said folks, which folks, which folks we you tortured mean, some folks. You mean just yeah, we tortured some folks, those folks. So that so she didn't she wasn't going to call for a recorded vote just so just so I don't know. That doesn't make any sense why she couldn't also record call for a recorded vote knowing she didn't have 44 people to make a recorded vote happen. So what, what if we just had two and one of them was you? So now you could say you called for it. But you calling for a recorded vote that's not going to happen. How does that needlessly endanger other folks? That doesn't that doesn't make sense. Just so you know. OK. So I think we need to figure out what the final text of this bill is first and foremost. Um, I think one of the things that is not in who's writing the bill. Why do you have to find out what the text is? Who's writing it? Why don't you tell us who's writing it? Who have you made these demands to when you go, we have to, this has to be in there. And who are you telling that to? Do you tell that to Nancy Pelosi, your leader? And what does she say? Could someone ask her that question, please? So these demands that you want, when you tell your leader who's negotiating the bill, what does she say back? <laughs> Is your leadership on board with this? And if not, what are you willing to do to make sure the people in your community are taken care of? This bill, thankfully, that was in the first bill, was this half trillion dollar to be leveraged to multi-trillion dollar corrupt slush fund for Wall Street, um, which was, you know, it, it added insult to the injury of an insufficient bill, but that it, that kind of corrupt provision is not in this bill. Um, so, you know, I think- You mean they already got all their money? Hey, we're not doing that again. 
We're not giving away another five trillion dollars to the richest people in the country. Oh, uh, I'm so relieved. We're not. That's we're not doing that really again. Really, not doing that again. <laughs> oh man. Who that's a close one, right? It's it's just like it's just like listening to Obama. It's just like listening to Obama. People have been people have commented. They know all the words. She knows all the words, as Chris Hedges say. She knows all the words. She knows how to play fealty to democracy. Once again, at least so far. So once again, first of all, we need the final text um, in order to make that decision. Uh, but at the very least, what we are being, what I'm hearing from Democratic leadership is to prepare for uh, the conditions of a recorded vote. So that's just kind of a long way of saying uh, we're not sure since we don't have the final. I'm not sure since I don't have the final text of the bill. Just pretend that when she says Republicans, she re- that's her code word for Pelosi. OK, that's that, that's her code word. What do you think? <laughs> you know what I think? So, um I hope everybody puts pressure. There's nothing. They they have no leverage. She has no leverage. She won't even she won't even call out. She'll never call out Nancy Pelosi, which means she has no leverage. She'll never. So we're going to get whatever Nancy Pelosi wants, no matter how much she she rants and gives a speech about Republicans. You're not going to get anything. We're only getting what Nancy Pelosi wants. Okay, and. She's already using Nancy Pelosi language. I'm sure she's already been told, use the word coverage. Everyone has to be covered. And she's using it. So uh, what what Nancy Pelosi's uh, proposal is to fix health care or during this pandemic while people are losing their jobs and then they lose their health care, her her fix. (laughs) Is to keep paying the insurance companies to cover you. It's, and by the way, it was a, that was a directive from the insurance companies. They wrote that in the letter to the Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic leadership, and they are doing exactly what they are told to do. Exactly. Exactly what they are told to do. So there you go. Uh, that was all hot air, as far as I can tell. She gave up any, she's not willing to call out her leadership to get it. And so she won't ever get it, which what she wants, unless Nancy Pelosi says, OK. Again, she's not willing to use her following to threaten the Democratic Party. She's not willing to use her following to uh, to use it as leverage to gain real power to get something done. It's not she's not willing to do it. Um, she went along with the first vote and um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. They said there's going to be. So she said, prepare for a recorded vote. Why? Why Why this one coming up? Oh, because this one is just going to have stuff to help people, but not, not enough to help people because you already fleece the country. So this one is not going to have a fleecing in it. It'll just be some around the edges helps for people. And some bullshit uh, COBRA payment plan to give people health care. Yeah, let's add way more layers of bureaucracy on top of delivering health care to people when they're sick. Instead of they go to the hospital, they get sick, they get taken care of, they go home. The government sends the money through Medicare to the hospital. Now we got to have a COBRA payment that goes to an insurance company. And then I got to go see my doctor and they got to call the insurance company and ask him if it's okay if he treats me. And if it's okay if I have this drug and if it's okay if I have this drug. And they got to ask that person and they got to add paperwork back and forth and images and and hours on the phone and that. That's how we do healthcare. And that's what Nancy Pelosi is hanging on to with her by her fingernails. And she ain't letting go. And Ocasio Cortez ain't ever, ever, ever gonna call out Nancy Pelosi's corruption. Nancy Pelosi is keeping you from Medicare for all. Nancy Pelosi is, and AOC is never gonna call her out for that. <laughs> Hey, this is the part where I tell you where our live shows are, but there aren't any. <laughs> and then I would tell you to go join our premium, but, but nobody has a fucking job. So why don't you just enjoy the video? <laughs> 